Welcome again to the Marketing Study Guide. My name is Jeff and I'm a Marketing Lecturer at the University of Sydney. And in this video we will look at how to use and read a perceptual map. The first thing we have to understand is what we're trying to do. Essentially we're trying to map the brain of a consumer. We need to see how they consider the different brands and differentiate themselves in the consumer's mind and then basically take that information and try to produce a visual map. Typically we use a two-axis perceptual map and we list determinate attributes on the map. So it's important to understand what they are. And for this I've used an example of a holiday for a family and they are making a decision about which hotel to book to. On this side we have what we call important attributes and they're the features of the hotel that the hotel must have for the family to even consider staying there. On this side we have the determinant attributes and probably from this list the family may have say 10 different hotels that may be suitable and available. So then they choose between those 10 hotels based on what we call determinate attributes. These are ones that determine the choice of which hotel that they select. So it's important we use these sort of attributes to produce the perceptual map. Another way of thinking about it is the traditional brand set classification scheme. Okay, up here we've got what we call the evoke set or the consideration set that they're brands that we will choose from. So if a brand or a product has the necessary important attributes, just like our hotel before, then we rely on determinate attributes to choose which one we will buy and which ones we will. Uh, perhaps save for later. As some examples of determinate attributes, let's look at three airline ads. Obviously the important attributes for an airline is, is they fly to lots of destinations, they have lots of flights, they have friendly staff, etc. That will probably narrow the list down to, again, a number of possible airlines that are suitable for that consumer then the consumer will rely upon determinate attributes. So the three ads I'm going to show you all highlight sort of minor points of the service but what the airline believes through their advertising research influences the choice of airlines. So this one's obviously about space and legroom. This one is in regards to using your laptop or cell phone on the flight. And this one for Air New Zealand is about the quality of the food. So each of those three ads have very little to do with the actual core service of the airline, which is flying people somewhere. And these are the areas that these airlines believe consumers will make their decisions on. So these are determinate attributes. Okay. Having said that, let's look at a standard perceptual map. Typically we have two axes. Okay, and they're opposites. High trust down to low trust. These are all different brands. I've just given them a letter name. And wide variety over here to limited variety. Okay, the maps I'm going to show you have all been produced off the free template that's available at perceptualmaps.com. Okay, so we, what we have is a score from say 1 up to 9 on trust. And the same thing on variety from one meaning little variety up to nine so something like B would have a high trust score and high variety score okay and that's all that's happening so what does this map actually tell us okay what we're able to do for this particular map there are preferred positions okay we want to be away from everywhere else we want to have clear points of differentiation. We want to have something unique about us. So in this case, we have brand B at the top. 
that has is strong on both attributes and they're obviously the clear market leader and the challenger brand in this market would be brand E. Over here we have specialist or niche brands. They have a good reputation, a lot of brand equity, but they have a limited variety of what they're offering. So they tend to specialize. So they're well positioned as well. So specialists and our problem brands sit in the middle. And I've just defined them as being middle of the road. They're lumped together so they've got no clear points of difference. They aren't market leaders. They don't have that high trust factor. And they don't, ain't specialists either. So these brands sort of struggle a little bit with points of differentiation. And probably the worst two obviously are A and F. Okay, what I've done here is I've used the same mapping template. I've changed the, cycle, the sizes of the circles, as you can see. And what I'm interested in is mapping A versus B. And you, you say they're brand A and brand B. And what I've done is I've actually added some numbers. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. And what this is, is their positions over time. So this is perhaps year one, year two, and year three. And the same thing happens here. So a perceptual map should be dynamic. You can actually use it to show shifts in positions over time and that becomes quite effective. So obviously if we go back to year one, brand A was relatively well positioned, but over time its positioning has shifted. Let's have a look at this. So initially in year one, it was probably equal or just about the highest in terms of the variety attribute. So it was doing well because it offered consumers choice. However, for whatever reason, it has obviously been perceived to have now less variety in choice and has shifted down here. As a consequence, it's also probably lost a, a little bit of trust. Whereas brand B, which had high trust and was the market leader in terms of, uh, I suppose, that brand equity measure, has obviously worked hard on variety and has moved across. This impact of moving across would actually have the impact of pushing A down as well. Okay, a couple of tips to consider when you're making a perceptual map. I would always suggest you make more than one map. Okay, you've usually got access to different determinant attributes. Producing more than one map will give you a different sense of the, of the market. As I've just shown you with the um, change in time, make your perceptual map dynamic. Okay, so what's happening over, over years to show how the positioning is shifted. If possible, if you have the data, produce the same map with the same determinant attributes, but for different segments or different target markets, because they're likely to have different perceptions of the brands. And as I've done, I've added little notes along the way, if you're doing this for an assignment or for a business report, try to do the same thing. Just don't produce the map and say, there it is. Actually try to interpret it. Add those circles, arrows, and, and little short notes by using text boxes. Like I said, I have a free Excel template spreadsheet for download. Uh, it's at this particular site, perceptualmaps.com. Uh, it's free, easy to use.